everyone. In today's video, I'll be talking about the ultimate guide to the best pillion motorcycles you can buy. They are all bikes built for maximum rider and passenger comfort, but they do still offer seriously different options to consider when choosing the right motorcycle for your own tour riding. I've been asked to do this video several times, and I finally got it down to a top 10 with a few honorary mentions at the end. I hope at least one of the motorcycles will be the perfect combination of comfort, style and excitement for you and your passenger. Whether you are a speed demon, or like a more relaxed ride, these 10 motorcycles all offer you unmatched riding comfort without losing that spark that makes a bike special for both the rider and pillion. So whether you're planning a weekend adventure or an intercontinental ride, these bikes will keep both you and your passenger smiling and get you where you want to go in comfort. So sit back, relax and enjoy the ride. Remember, the journey is often more important than the destination. With pillion motorcycles, what is often most important is great suspension for a smooth ride. A comfortable, well thought out riding position is also important, but a powerful engine always helps. And I have left no stone unturned in this quest to bring you the best. I tried to consider the needs of both riders and passengers who want a comfortable and thrilling experience. Remember, if your passenger is happy and comfortable, you will get to ride your bike more often. So it's a win-win situation for most of us. I hope my suggestions help you find the right bike for you. A bike that can help you and your passenger get the best riding experience possible. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for the best motorcycle content anywhere too. YouTube is being brutal with my earnings at the minute until the copyright strike is up in April. So I'm sorry there hasn't been many videos. I'm just having to catch up with other work. But I will get back to the normal routine before too long. Thanks for watching and supporting the channel. Your feedback and comments are always appreciated, as are the donations. I've left the donations link in the description if anyone wants to buy me a coffee. Please don't use the YouTube giving button, as they take most of it and they've got plenty already. All donations are much appreciated and it helps keep the channel free from sponsored posts. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to share them below. So let's begin our journey to find the best pillion motorcycles ever built. I'm going back to the original format. I'll look at the most obvious choices first and gradually work through revealing some less obvious choices until we get to what I think is possibly the best all-round pillion motorcycle you can buy. This will be different for different people though, and these are all great bikes. I hope at least one of them will suit your riding style, and that it gives you some ideas to explore when searching for your next motorcycle. I look forward to hearing about the bikes you add in the comments too. Anyway, first up today, and the most obvious choice, is the Honda Goldwing. Known for its exceptionally smooth engine and spacious seating for both rider and pillion, the early flat 4 engine was eventually replaced by a bigger flat 6, but both are renowned for their vibration-free performance, even at higher revs. Various levels of comfort come from the very different models released over the years, but all will deliver a seamlessly smooth ride. I still remember my first ride on the first generation GL1000 Goldwing. It was a very different beast to the Goldwings of today, but that engine was silky smooth, in a way I had never felt before. That is the hallmark of the Goldwing, and every future model would retain that vibration-free engine design. You can get every conceivable luxury feature on some models. A full sound system, heated seats, cruise control and more came on later models. And they make the Goldwing one of the best spec motorcycles on the market. These were bikes built to outperform the best touring motorcycles on the market when they were first released, and they have become the benchmark by which all big touring bikes have been judged ever since. 
personally, it is the old series one that is the best of all the gold wings, in my opinion. But there is a gold wing out there to suit most people. The later models get bigger and bigger, and some of the fully dressed models could almost be described as an armchair on wheels. They are hard to beat when it comes to all round comfort, and no list of pillion motorcycles would be complete without these incredible bikes. Next, we have the Kawasaki Versus 1000 SE. This is often described as an adventure touring bike, but in reality, you should see it as what it is. It's a touring bike of the highest caliber. It often gets overlooked, but it is a great bike. It isn't made to go off-road, but that means the designers have built a more focused GT motorcycle, which will deliver mile-eating comfort for two, with no fluss and plenty of performance to spare. Kawasaki Versus 1000 gives you a smooth ride and excellent wind protection. It's a reliable bike, with more than enough power for tilt touring, and the comfortable seating position makes it an ideal choice for long-distance rides with a passenger. A quick shifter and cruise control will be the finishing touches for some people, and the Versys 1000 is a motorcycle that has been built perfectly for the job it's intended for. The four-cylinder engine is tuned to give smooth linear power delivery with no surprises, and that won't be to everyone's choice, but it is an easy bike to ride even at slow speeds. However, you can find yourself well beyond any speed limits faster than you might think. Unless you live alongside an autobahn, the Kawasaki Versys 1000 will give you more speed than you can ever use. You also get a much more comfortable rider triangle than with many of its competitors. Next, for those who appreciate a classic V20 design, the Indian Chief is a true gem. It offers a comfortable, spacious and laid-back ride, making it perfect for long journeys with a pillion. For some, a slow revving V-twin engine will always be the weapon of choice, and the engine in the Indian Chief really is a peach. As with the Goldwing, there are many versions of the Indian Chief, so it's easy to find one that suits your own particular needs. And to be clear here, I am talking about the post-2014 Indian Chiefs, built after Polaris Industries took over the company. This motorcycle has no connection at all with the previous Indian Chiefs built at Gilroy or Kings Mountain. The bike was built around a new 1800cc, 111 cubic inch engine that was dubbed the Thunderstroke 3. Polaris lightened the crank, the pistons and the conrods, so this big 49 degree V-twin engine retains all those classic attributes of a V-twin, but picks up faster and revs out better. A single balancer shaft smooths out the worst of the vibrations, while retaining that character that defines these engines. Torque is king here, and the Indian Chief will pull from tick over with a seamless power delivery, and the six-speed box is slick. This is a big motorcycle, and won't be for everyone, but it is a great example of a classic design and has gained a cult following since Polaris took over at the helm. We have two more Kawasaki's next. Two different bikes, but they are from a whole exalted lineage that goes right back to the infamous GPZ1000RX I talked about in the bargain bikes of the 1980s video linked above. The Kawasaki ZZR range has a history the ZZR 1100 was the fastest production motorcycle on the market at one point, but it is the ZZR 1200 and ZZR 1400 I will talk about here. First, the ZZR 1200, or the ZX12C as it was known in some markets, is in my humble opinion, possibly one of the best high-speed touring bikes I have ever ridden. This isn't your average tourer, it is true hyperbike, a big, highly tuned engine in a long, stable chassis built for high speed stability. First built in 2002, it was only made for three years. Then the all-new ZZR 1400 
would take over as king of the Kawasaki range. Although different in many ways, you can't help but compare the Cobb Fed ZZR1200 with its newer fuel-injected cousin, the ZZR1400. The spec sheets make the 1400 look massively more powerful in comparison to the 1200, but independent dyno runs everywhere tell quite a different story. Of the rate of 160 horsepower produced at the crank by the Kawasaki ZZR1200, 145 horsepower reaches the rear wheel. On the ZZR1400, the rated power is verging on 200 horsepower, but what reaches the rear wheel is in general closer to around 165 horsepower. Add to that the fact that the low speed fueling on the 1200 is far better and the torque just seems more usable. In the real world, there is a little difference in performance. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that the 1400 isn't faster. It is. However, it's only really faster if you have a very long stretch of highway. The smooth power delivery of the 1200 makes it easy to go fast. The fuel injected ZZR 1400 is much more unpredictable at low revs. It never really seems happy below 3000 RPM and the pickup was always more hesitant. With the ZZR 1200, you know, when you crack open the throttle, the front wheel will immediately rise to the occasion. With the 1400, you never quite know when that bark will become a surge. What you do know is that when that surge comes, it will be huge, and that makes me as a rider more weary. With the 1200, it's just a case of wind it on and enjoy the world rushing by. Although the 1400 is faster and more streamlined, the ZZR 1200 is more comfortable especially for the pillion, who benefits a lot from the bigger screen on the 1200. Years ago, Visor Down did a back-to-back -back test, and there's an article where they say some very similar things after their experiences. If you're interested, just do a search for ZZR1200 versus ZZR1400, splitting airs, and you will find it, but I will put a link in the description. Next, we have another two motorcycles built around the same platform. For those seeking adventure, the BMW R1250GS is still the easiest of the heavyweight adventure bikes to ride off-road, and you get a comfortably plush pillion seat. In addition, we have the BMW R1250RT, a smooth and stable tourer with a road-going bias. Both of these bikes offer levels of comfort that are hard to argue with. The 1250 Boxer engine is strong with plenty of low down torque, which makes it a lazy ride with easy to use power. Even fully loaded with passenger and luggage, they will pull like a train, and the low center of gravity made possible by the Boxer engine means that maneuverability at slow speed is easier than you might think. The Telelib suspension is an acquired taste when you've grown up dealing with fork dive under braking. It does take some getting used to, but it works well, and it makes for a motorcycle that holds its line beautifully, even on rutted roads. The shaft drive is one of the biggest selling points in some markets, and BMW do have a long history of building great touring bikes. Dealer satisfaction isn't always the best though, and BMW do have a reputation for too many recalls. To their credit, they are maybe more likely to facilitate recalls than some other manufacturers, so the ball does swing both ways. The GS Adventure is probably the best known of all the adventure bikes, and it has earned its place at the top of the best-selling adventure bike list. The R1250RT sacrifices the off-road ability of the GS, in favour of sharper steering and a lower seat height. Never the cheapest option, they do hold their price as well, so if you look after it, you can be assured you may well do better with financial losses, especially if you're one of those people 
who changes their motorcycle every few years. Another motorcycle that is easy to overlook is the Honda XL1000V Varadero. If you need a big, mile-munching bike that can breeze along terrible road surfaces, then the Honda Varadero is definitely worth a look. The seat for both rider and passenger is, shall we say, capacious, and provides one of the most comfortable places you could ever find on two wheels. The layout of the controls on the XL1000V is superb. Simple but functional would be the best way to describe it. A comfortable, well-thought-out rider triangle makes the riding position excellent, and the strong engine, which is, after all, a detuned version of the bike Colin Edwards won the Superbike World Championship on, pulls like a train and will go on forever. Honda's linked braking system was great on the road, but far from perfect if you were doing any serious off-road riding. It will stop the bike on a sixpence, though, and if you need to, it's not a hard job to unlink the brakes if that suits you better. The bodywork works better than it looks like it should. In foul weather, you will find yourself well protected from the elements, and even at speed, you can ride with your visor up without getting a mouthful of bugs. The bike is big and high, but the seat height is actually lower than many comparable bikes and a fairly low centre of gravity makes low speed manoeuvrability better than you might think. Power comes in steadily from just 3000 rpm and there's no annoying vibrations at the bars or in the pegs. That power just builds and builds as you open the throttle. 3000 to 6000 rpm is the sweet spot and there is a little reason to push it further in normal riding. Short shifting allows the bike to make the most of that huge tank, and miles pass by in the blink of an eye. Green laning is fine on the Varadero, but this isn't a true off-road bike. It will do gravel and fire road spine, but deep ruts will see that 244 kilos take its toll, and it's easy to lose the heavy front end. The high level exhaust means that unlike many modern adventure bikes, the big XL1000V will even deal with deeper water crossings and reassuringly the Honda Electrics don't start flashing like a Christmas tree every time you hit a puddle. Where it shines most is basically anywhere between small twisty single track roads and long haul motorway riding. Open the throttle on a fast road and the bike will happily keep revving forever, but it will happily sit around in city traffic without the heat build-up you often get with much newer, more expensive bikes. Calling this bike a jack of all trades is true, but it doesn't do the Honda XL1000V Varadero justice. It really is the master jack when it comes to most riding situations. Next on the list is the Triumph Sprint GT. Now again, don't get me wrong, the Triumph Sprint in its many guises are all great motorcycles, but in 2010, the Triumph Sprint GT was launched. It was more focused on tilt touring. It had a longer wheelbase and it was heavier, with a better and more spacious and more comfortable pillion zone. The 1050 triple engine is fantastic and produced around 128 horsepower at just over 9,000 RPM. Max torque of just below 110 newton meters arrives very quickly at just over 6,000 RPM, and the engine pulls cleanly from below 3,000. Gearing is set up so that at a 70 mile an hour cruising speed, it is doing just 4,000 RPM. And not only is it happy at that, but a quick twitch of the throttle will take you past anything you need to pass, quickly and easily, with no real need to drop it down a gear like you would with many of the four-cylinder bikes. The shower suspension was also beefed up on the GT model, and it's faultless. Preload and rebound damping adjustments on the rear also mean that however much weight you hang on it, you can still get a decent ride. The longer chassis allowed the pillion pegs to be repositioned and the rear seat lowered, which makes a huge difference for passenger comfort 
and the bodywork is just designed really well. The bubble of air around the rider and passenger is calm even at autobahn speeds, and it's easy to forget how fast you are really going until you look down at the speedo. The Triumph Sprint really is one of the best bikes Triumph have ever made in the modern era, and the Sprint GT takes passenger satisfaction up a level from the other models. So for two-up touring, there are few bikes that combine that rare combination of comfort and exhilaration quite so well. Now, the next bike is much more of a niche motorcycle and won't be everyone's choice. But the Motobuzzi Audace is a monster of a bike and the heavyweight 300 kilo chassis makes for a stable platform. The 1400cc engine is strong and deals with the weight easily. When I say strong, the engine chucks out a hefty 121 newton meters of torque from just 3000 rpm. But unlike many of the heavyweights, the Gutsy engine will rev. Maximum power doesn't hit until 6500 rpm, where it produces around 100 horsepower but it will carry on right up to its 8,000 RPM redline with no stress. Build quality is sublime, and although not maybe my style, I have to admit, the Motocut Ciudades is one of the best looking bikes on the market. It somehow bridges the gap between the classic American V-twin cruisers and the power cruisers like the V-Max, MT-01 and Ducati Diablo. The bike has a fantastic growl of an exhaust sound too, and even with the standard pipes, sounds far from tame. At low revs, you get a glorious rumble, and as the revs rise, it turns into an addictive roar. Piaggio have improved build quality year by year with all of their bikes, and the fit and finish on the Audace really is about as good as you will get with any Italian bikes on the market. This is another bike that is over-engineered everywhere and there are beautiful little design details everywhere you look. Together with the engine, these touches will always make the bike stand out from the crowd. Moving on, we come to the Yamaha FJR 1300. The FJR was born from a long line of Yamaha motorcycles with a heritage that goes back to the first FJ 1100s built in 1984. That was a lineage that runs continuously for almost 40 years. And this is another bike I featured in the Bargain Bikes of the 1980s video. The FJ 1300 is a sport touring motorcycle that balances performance and comfort like few others. They deliver an exhilarating ride that will allow a good rider to keep up with the best sports bikes while maintaining exceptional comfort for both rider and passenger. Sleek aerodynamic bodywork gives a quiet, relaxed bubble that extends beyond the rider and passenger and even fully loaded with luggage, you will have plenty of power to spare. Sometimes overshadowed by more powerful bikes from other manufacturers, the Yamaha FJR 1300 is a classic example of what Yamaha have always done best. It's a package that is more than the sum of its parts. It might not be the biggest, or the fastest, or the most highly specced of the big Grand Tourers, but it will deliver endless miles of smiles for even the most demanding of riders and passengers. They are equally at home on long highway runs or carving through mountain passes. They are remarkably nimble for such a big bike, and that is where the FGR's heritage shows through. Maneuverability at both fast and slow speed is as good as many smaller bikes. It feels sure-footed compared to most sports bikes, but agile compared to most tourers. You really do get the best of both worlds with the Yamaha FGR 1300. Finally, we have what I consider to be the best all-round pillion motorcycle you can buy, and it also happens to be one of the cheapest bikes on today's list. You know value for money always ranks highly for me, so I guess it's no surprise my winner is a value for money bike. The Yamaha XTZ1200 Super Tenere 
is probably one of the most underrated of all the big ADV bikes. It wasn't the fastest or the best off-road or the best handling, but that big vertical twin with a shaft final drive will go on forever if treated well. The whole bike is over-engineered, and the engine was designed for this bike alone. It wasn't an engine designed for a different bike and then made to fit. The low-end grunt is phenomenal, and roll-on power is smooth as silk. The Alhars floor was its weight. It was almost 30 kilos heavier than the R1200GS of its day, and that's a lot. On the road, you would never believe it was that heavy. The bike just doesn't feel big on the roof at all, but having to pick it up on a muddy trail is another thing entirely. Even walking it around in the garage is a pain in the backside. On highways and fast mountain roads, it's a joy to ride, and even at low speeds, it's stable and balanced. The seat is made for long days, and it's a comfortable place for both rider and passenger. They are as reliable as anything on the road too. They have very few flaws, and there is something very complete about the design. First released in 2010, the design remained almost unchanged for the next nine years, and was only dropped in 2019. That's a long run in these times of people always chasing the next big thing, and is testimony to the practicality of these bikes. They are strong, comfortable and reliable, which is a powerful combination. It is a shame they didn't sell better. If they had, we would have a better choice now on the second-hand market. They hold their price well and are now beginning to be appreciated more, but you get a lot of bike for your money with the XTZ 1200 Super Tenere. I will finish off today's list with a few honorary mentions. If you are a fan of Harley Davidson, the Road Glide is a great choice for tilt comfort. With its iconic style and comfortable seating position, this motorcycle allows you and your passenger to enjoy the open road in that particularly Harley Davidson style. It's a proven design and has just been tweaked gradually over the years. If you like the Milwaukee style, then this is a bike to consider. If you prefer a sportier and technology-filled ride, the Ducati Multistrada V2 could well be what you're looking for. With a powerful engine and agile handling, this motorcycle guarantees an adrenaline-pumping ride for both the rider and the pillion. It may not have the outright power of the newer V4, but the big V-twin has plenty of grunt and more power than you will ever need. The technology package is top-notch too, it's a bike filled with high-end components, so it should last well. It has an adventure bike style riding position, but it will always feel most at home on the roads. Lastly, we have the inimitable Suzuki V-Strom, in 650, 1000 and the latest 1050 forms. And no, I'm not including the P-Strom 800. Now, the V-Strom has featured in many of my videos, and you know my 15 years of ownership are bound to make me a little biased. I go into the 650 in detail here. They are all reliable and versatile adventure bikes, and those V-twin engines are sublime. With a comfortable seating position, bomb-proof reliability, and excellent performance, they will provide you and your passenger with endless smiles and countless hours of fun. They are the perfect steed for most adventures. Well, I'm going to wrap it up there for today. There are many more great bikes that will take two of you off on great adventures. No list could be definitive, but I have tried to be as objective as I can. And with over 40 years riding experience, I do have just a little experience. Thanks for watching, and thanks again for the donations. They will always be put to good use and I will leave the donations link in the description. Please don't use the YouTube giving button, as they take most of it, and I get almost nothing of what you give. All donations are much appreciated, and it does help keep the channel free from sponsored posts, because I don't think you need yet another channel 
trying to sell you male grooming products or VPNs. If you haven't already, take a look around the channel. You'll find some great videos from every corner of the world of motorcycles, and YouTube has pulled them all from the rankings, so they need lots of love. Why not take a look at the website too, as well as the t-shirts in the shop. The blog has many articles about all sorts, from maintenance tricks and stories, to ride outs, track days and other adventures. There are also many other printed products on the Redbubble page too. That's where I proof the new designs. They make great presents, and I try to put promo codes in the community page for discounts when I can. So it's always worth checking in case there's a big discount on. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you got this far too. We really do have the best motorcycle community on YouTube, and I thank you all for that. Remember, keep your spanners close and your keys even closer. Ride free, everyone. Mmm. -hmm.